Just like the sign says, welcome to San Gennaro. I thought it would be a good idea to possibly come over to Mulberry Street and see what was going on prior to the San Gennaro Feast. I know everybody will be posting when the feast starts, but I've seen this before. It's like a giant construction project that goes on in the street. So I'm gonna take you for a walk down here and let's see what's going on. Hey, this is Larry here with New York Daily Views. We are here at the San Gennaro Feast before it opens. We're at the corner of uh, Grand Street and uh, Mulberry, uh, watching the setup, watching people uh, prepare for the feast, which is gonna to start tomorrow. Um, so we're going to take you through the feast and uh, before it opens and show you how it uh, all comes together. See them setting up all the stands. They got their lumber, got their Italian lumberjacks taking care of everything. Right down the street, it's like, like I said, it's like a giant construction project. It's all contractors mixed with tourists. Everybody's setting up, getting ready. It's the uh, 14th of September. I believe the feast starts tomorrow, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll check that and get back to you but everybody's just setting up still. Lots of work going on. I think this was a good idea. I can't wait to come here after it opens, see what's going on. I came last year for the first time in a few years and it was great as always. Like I was saying, they got the pizza oven out in the street, ready to go. This is a big stand. They got seafood. They got all sorts of stuff. I've eaten here. Very good stuff. We're at the corner of Hester and Mulberry. And the feast goes a little bit each direction. People just wandering everywhere. Cafe Napoli. Right there years ago, it was a good place. Bakery setting up their case lines to sell cannolis and whatnot, all Italian pastries. Game setting up. All the restaurants still remain open while the setup continues. When the feast actually starts, you'll see, as many of you know, you can't even walk down these streets in the height of the uh, festival days, the feast days. All different stands like always, pizza, various shish kebabs. It's corn, of course. The feast runs on Mulberry Street between Canal Street to the south and Houston Street to the north. More of it concentrated towards the Canal Street side. But you can see how narrow the street is once they set up all the stands, so it's definitely gonna get crowded. People are just walking here and during the day and, uh, and it's crowded. Not even a feast yet, it's just the restaurants open. See a lot of the restaurant owners out trying to grab business for lunch. They walk around trying to grab the tourists as they walk down the streets trying to uh, pick a place to eat. They're very aggressive, but all the places are good, so you gotta appreciate the hard effort trying to get business. Like I said, construction continues. Very interesting to see the setup. So much lumber used, all this stuff will get broken down the day after the feast is over. having lunch. This will remain in place during the feast. This is the cannoli king. Honestly, his cannolis are so-so. Another pizza oven. Getting ready. Okay, so 
We're now approaching um, Mulberry Street and Grand Street. Again, the feast goes a little bit each direction. Got the Cannoli King again. We got Ferrara down there. There's a little bit each way. There's the uh, Ferris wheel, which is always here. It used to be down further. They used to stick it between two buildings. It was kind of funny to see. Like I was saying, this is just a regular day. The feast isn't even open yet. And there's a lot of people in the street just looking around, seeing what's going on. A lot of restaurant space in the street too. You know, post-pandemic, probably these would have been booths or something for the uh, feast, but now the restaurants take up all the uh, all the street space for their business. But it's nice. Even the ladies getting involved with setup. Ferrara's got a stand in the street as well. They have a number of stands throughout the uh, feast uh, route here on Mulberry Street. More setup. It's quite a project. It's unbelievable how much setup is actually involved. Like I said, currently some of this is permanent street dining, but uh, some of it's just set up for the feast. We're here at the uh, approaching the corner of Mulberry and Broom Street. We can cross. See how tight the street is with all the construction trucks. We're gonna move onto the sidewalk here for a little stay bit. on the sidewalk side until there's some more room in the street. Try to cut out over here. Another Ferrara stand. A lot of the old Italian uh, specialty shops used to be here in the uh, Little Italy area have uh, closed and, you know, it's a shame because they were a really nice part of this too. Yeah. So when you went to the feast, you got to go check those out as well. But that's the way things are changing lately. Gonna look back down from where we walked back down Mulberry Street heading towards Canal. We're at Canal Street, I mean, I'm sorry, we're at uh, Kenmar Street on Mulberry. So we're crossing Kenmar, continuing up the east block of Mulberry Street, getting closer towards the end. Like I said, it gets a little, a little quieter down here as you leave the, um, more of the proper little Italy area. Here's some of the dirty prizes laying on the street. That'll be part of this, this game set up here. These are some of the more basic feast stands that you'll see at a lot of feasts. Some vendors selling their crafts and whatnot. There's the uh, steak sandwich with mozzarella, which you pretty much see at almost every Italian feast, whether it be on Long Island, the city. Always good, always a good option. We're approaching Prince Street, Spring, Spring Street. We're approaching Spring Street on Mulberry, heading up Mulberry again. We're heading north towards Houston Street, which is 
towards the north end of the feast. Watch the setup continue. Like I said, we're moving out of what is really little Italy, so the um, vendors get a little more sparse, and like I said, they're more more um, vendors that you would see at a regular feast. So uh, again, it's corn, gyros, gyros, whatever. A couple more blocks to go. Still interesting, still a lot of setup. Big crowd over there. Not sure for what. We'll see what it is. Uh, Ruby's Pizza, that's what it is. Let me show you the extent of some of the construction that goes on here. Look at all this. Really building a room in the street, basically. All this lumber, all the lumber loaded in a van, ready to be put together. A lot of time and money goes into this. Hope to have a very successful uh, feast and good weather. Some more vendors. Like I said, it's much quieter up here as we head north. set up more outdoor dining big outdoor dining space actually beautiful day today hopefully the weather's nice and cool not too hot again we're heading north I've seen this stand everywhere Heading north towards Houston Street, which is again north side of the uh, feast on uh, on Mulberry. So we're crossing Prince Street now on Mulberry, and you can see as you get further north, very little going on, very quiet. We're almost to Houston. I believe it's the next, the next street up ahead. Welcome to San Gennaro Feast in the Little Italy area of New York City. This is Mulberry Street, almost to Houston Street. More vendors. I remember many years back, this spot between the buildings here is where they used to have the Ferris wheel that I showed you earlier. Imagine the Ferris wheel being in this spot. Kind of crazy, right? You can hear the power tools as they set up. I also remember years ago, this, this youth center here was one of the few places you could use the bathroom years ago. I don't think you could still do it. You used to pay like 50 cents or a dollar and they would let you go in and use the bathroom. Interesting fact. We're almost to the end. It's a good place to start down here if you come to uh, visit the feast because it's less crowded to start. A nice trick is if you don't want to come in the evening, come very early on a weekend or even during the week. A lot of the stuff is open early. Not everything, but a lot of the stands are open, open early for everyone to enjoy. So. You want to beat the crowd and not get into the craziness it's a really good way to enjoy the feast even early on a saturday or sunday very early sunday especially because you can't park in the area so now we've reached mulberry and east houston which is the end of the feast and i'm gonna turn around and show you where we came from all the way down there. And that's, now we're standing on the north end of the feast, looking south towards Canal Street, where the feast ends. 
So, hope you enjoyed this little tour here.